You ready? Sounds five good. things you didn't know you could do. All right. So let's see. What are these five mysterious things? <laughs> Here they come, everybody. One, two, three, four, five. Simplify your life. That's a big word. I understand that. With user libraries. So what user libraries is a concept within Mark Magic. It's been around forever on our Mark Magic AS400 software as well as the platform independent Mark Magic software, which runs on Windows and Linux and all that stuff. All have this idea of a user library. Most folks, well, a good good chunk of folks, use the default Mark Magic user library. People on the line may be familiar with this, called Mark Mag Data, M R K M A G D T A, and some customers put all their formats and all their graphics into that one library. So what Ken's going to show you, as soon as I get that I'm done going through this list, we're going to shift over to Ken. He's going to show you live use of user libraries. But he's going to show you how you can create other user libraries in Mark Magic. Some for production formats, some for maybe test formats. So they're so so they're not hitting each other. So you can test really in your live environment with just sample formats. So it's a great great way to maintain that separate from production. So it's a really good concept. Number two, I think a lot of people probably know about this, but we wanted to show it. Um, export and import of formats. So basically, uh, you can move formats or graphic jobs or or uh, text blocks from one user library to another user library. And what's the last word here? Platforms, yes, even different platforms you can move stuff around. So you may have Mark Magic running on the AS400, and you're like, you know what? We have this other uh, office and this other place, and they're running on a Windows environment where we love Mark Magic. You can actually take your AS400 formats and bring them down to a Mark Magic PI instance running on Windows or Linux or whatever, and you don't have to redesign or do anything. And it's all through the same exact J Magic interface. So he's going to show you that, I and mean, that's pretty cool. Three. How to create a rule using our print transformer option without any programming, zero programming. Yeah, he's, Ken's going to show you how you can start emailing labels or forms or anything within Mark Magic, um, things that you would normally print. That, like, you know what? Maybe these customers have, they have an email address. You know, you know, instead of printing them, just email them to to their address. He's going to show how you can automatically do that with zero programming, without any changes to your code. Four, um, and this kind of goes in with number three also the PDFing and emailing. A lot of folks don't know that any format within Mark Magic, it could be a label, a zebra label, it could be a uh, it could be a form or your statement invoice, any of that stuff that you're used to printing, you can keep on printing it, but Mark Magic has the capability to actually create an Adobe PDF of that form also at the at any time. So you can email it. So maybe your customers overseas, they need a bunch of shipping labels or item labels that you maybe you're printing out now and you're putting them in an envelope and shipping them over there. You can just have Mark Magic, you know what, send them as a PDF, a little PDF, have a thousand page PDF, send it to them, and they can print them out there right on the spot. We have all that flexibility within us. And number five, duplexing, one of my favorites, printing on the back of a sheet of paper. So uh, there's a couple quick ways to do that. Ken, we chose one of the ways, it's Formweaver. Uh, there's actually another way to do it too, but Ken's going to show you how to do it within Formweaver. We can have those terms and conditions or instructions or any other information really a totally different format, print on the back side of maybe your pick list or your invoice uh, and how all that is done. Um, I'm going to hand over to Ken in just a second. I'm going to give you just a little bit of a warning because Ken and I looked at the, the group of folks that were attending and a lot of you folks are on the AS400 side of things. So he's, we've chose to show some of this more on the green screen side. Uh, that's what Ken's going to be showing. But keep in mind, anything he's doing on the green screen, you could do it in JMagic through the WYSIWYG designer. And, uh, so please keep that in mind and on any platform, AS400 or the PI instance of, of uh, Mark Magic. Okay? And please feel free to uh, shoot over some questions using that, that question option. So I'm going to make Ken uh, the presenter, give it over to him, and he's going to start going through with these five items. All right. Thanks, Chuck. Good afternoon. Uh, morning, everybody, if, uh, if you're on the West Coast. Uh, yeah, uh, I've got my green screen session here, and I want to start off showing uh, user libraries, explaining how uh, uh, the benefit behind those. Uh, let me just start up my Mark Magic here. A lot of you, everyone should know how to start fire up Mark Magic. And uh, the first thing that you'll notice right in the middle, uh, user library. Uh, MRK, MAG, DTA. Uh, that is the library Chuck mentioned earlier. Uh, that is a default library that comes with Mark Magic. Uh, it, ca it can be used as a user library where you have create formats and 
graphics and all that good stuff. Uh, a lot of people already, you know, create all their formats there and even have it in production using MarkMag Data as a user library. And um, it's a very important library in MarkMagic, and it's not, not recommended to actually do that. So that's where the user library comes into play. And, um, we would like you to create a library and move formats into a separate environment. And the easiest way to do that, um, I think, is just type the new library name right in the middle here. Um, create it for you right on the fly, right? Yeah, the, the, the library doesn't even have to exist on the server. So I'm just going to type in uh, webinar 316 for the for the date and hit enter. And you'll see it's saying, uh, I don't even, there's not even a library with that name. Uh, create the library, yes or no? And I'll just do yes. And it's creating a new Mark Magic library where you can make new formats, import new formats, labels and designs, all that. Um, if we toggle and look, it is empty right now. We'll fix that in the next section. But uh, it is a new user library ready for you to uh, work in. So um, I don't know if Chuck, you want to talk about the production and development. Yeah. Uh, so what, one of the, the yeah, I, I would love to. So the big deal with for me anyway, user libraries. I don't know if anyone. Hopefully, all you folks are Seinfeld episodes or Seinfeld uh, fans. One of the episodes George was talking about worlds colliding. You know, he had his work friends and then his friends outside of, you know, work, and they can never get together because if they collide, it's going to be a problem. That's a user library. So you have your production user library run in production, and you could have as many other user libraries as you want, but may, maybe have a development user library where you can make changes of formats and test those changes without affecting that other world, that production world. And maybe some of you folks have multiple companies that you're representing or that you're you know, producing forms for. You can have a user library for each of the companies. There's no limit to this. And one other feature within user libraries is that print time, Mark Magic, you can tell Mark Magic to actually search the user's library list at print time, and whichever user library is you know, high up on the list, it's going to find it, and it finds the format that it needs. It's going to pull it from there. So mm -hmm. again, you can switch. You put your development user library on top of production and test out any new changes that you have, and then you'll be able to export and import any of those changes into development uh, once you're once you're done. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, and it, it's the idea is just you have you know copies of libraries in one, copies of copies of formats in one, and copies of formats in another. And depending on which one's higher on the list, like Chuck said, it makes uh, testing things a lot easier. Uh, so I'm going to start Mark Magic back up in a, another user library that I have called Webinar. It has a lot of my uh, example formats in it that I love to show. Uh, and actually, I really quickly did that, sorry. But if I do start Mark Mag and then space and then the library name, that's a really quick way to get into the library right away. And, and if you mistype the library, it will say, hey, do you want to create this new library? If it's a library not on your system, we prompt you and say, hey, do you sure you want to make this? Um, and the same is true in JMagic. You can start in JMagic and create new user libraries, not just on the green screen. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I've got my own personal library, MMKWH, and everyone's got their own for testing and, and uh, messing around. And so, uh, so this library webinar, you can see there's a bunch of demo formats, some zebra labels, some uh, HP laser forms. I want to bring some of these over to the user library that I created, uh, webinar 316. And so that brings us to number two. two. You're going to get to number two right now, aren't you? Yes. Exporting. Yes. Exporting and importing. There it is. I knew it. So what we're going to do is export a bunch of things from webinar to a save file on the server and import them to the other library. And um, very easy tools to do that in Mark Magic. Again, Chuck said that this can all be done also in JMagic. There is an export tool uh, and graphical interface in JMagic to do that. Uh, I'll do it here just because okay. I'm already here. So utilities, right. export. And all the different options here, I'll just run through them real quick. Uh, we can, we're going to save this to a save file. Uh, we're going to just export everything into one save file. Uh, the next option down is uh, on the next screen, we're actually presented with a list of all the different Mark Magic objects that can be exported. And I'm basically just saying, show me everything in my library here. Uh, star all. I mean, I can F4 and show you that you know there's jobs you can export formats, just formats. Show me just graphics on the next screen, but I'm just going to go through them all and pick and choose which ones I want to export. Uh, same thing with these next two options here. Just show me everything. 
the save file uh, doesn't even have to exist already. It, it, you know, it could if you've got your own personal save file that you use, uh, but you can just put a name here and a library and we'll make the save file. Uh, target release is uh, the IBM OS release uh, of the system that you're going to be importing it to. Uh, since we're staying on the same system, star current is the option there. So I'll hit enter. Uh, this library doesn't have any Mark Magic monitors, so uh, we're going to do continue uh, F19 to go to the next list of objects, which are Mark Magic jobs. There's a list of, list of jobs in the library. Um, I'm going to bring over a job. It's it's at the bottom here. Um, it's a job that I'm going to use in uh, number five later on for the duplex example. So I'm just going to export this Mark Magic job. It's just it's got a, a print command in there that we use for uh, for printing. Uh, forms. So there's just a really simple print command stored in this job. Uh, so I, I know again I did that I did that quickly. So if you weren't watching, I did I put a one there, uh, which means select the job. And if I put a one there and hit enter, it makes it selected on the right. So once it's selected, after putting the one and enter, then you can F19 to continue. And here's a list of formats uh, in the library. Uh, I'll pick and choose a few that I want to bring over. Uh, there's a, a format here that I'm going to use in the next example, a uh, statement format. So there's a one there. I'm going to go down and pick some more. I'll put a one next to a terms and conditions format that I want to export. And let's put ones next to some labels. You can put ones next to a bunch of things and just hit enter, enter, enter. And they all become star selected. F19 to continue to the next this is a real neat thing too here. Uh, you can see there's already a one there. Uh, and that's because MarkMagic noticed that on one of the formats that you exported on the previous screen, there was a graphic on that format. And it's saying, hey, uh, you might want to bring this graphic along too, because if you don't, there's going to be a missing graphic when you <laughs> open it up in the other library. So it's suggesting by putting a one there. So I'm just going to hit enter, make the graphic selected. And another neat thing too, when we go to the next, continue to the rules. Uh, it noticed that the format that I'm exporting is involved in a rule set that I've pre-created. Um, and it's saying, hey, you might want to bring along this rule set too. And that's, again, something I'm going to show you in the it, rules section. It's just so smart. Mark Magic <laughs> is so smart. That actually knows to look and grab these things for you. And again, you can do all this in the JMagic screen uh, as yeah. well, not just the green screen. So I'm going to hit enter, make it selected, F19 to continue. And the last object that, that we present you with is text blocks. I'm just going to continue past that. I don't need to export any text block. Cool. F7, or shift F7, F19 to continue. And yes, you can see at the bottom, everything's been exported to that one save file. And I'm, I'm just going to, met, just to, I know you already talked about this, kind of, but that happened. he happened to choose save file, which is good AS400 type thing to do if you're going to go from one system to another. And if you notice another option for export, you can export to a, a PC file. So it could go right there to the IFS. You can, mm -hmm. you can grab it from there and email it. And when you do this through the JMagic interface, it actually creates the export as an XML file that can then be sent over to another system and then imported. So we have all those options. We just had to yeah, pick one to show you guys. This is the one we went with. <laughs> a lot of different options. Yeah, we could probably yep. just spent the whole half hour on all the different things. But um, for just one, this one we're going to save file. Uh, so what's next is to switch over now to the other library that I created. The empty one. This one's empty. So I'm just typing in the name again in the middle here. And then now that I hit, now that the library is already a user library, when I hit enter, it's just going to poof right over. So there's no right. creating library. It's already been created. You can switch between libraries, you know, all you want. So uh, it's been, I switched over and all that's left is to import now. It's kind of just the exact reverse process, uh, utilities import, I for import. And it's, you know, where, where do you want to import from? So it's, there's that save file. Uh, again, um, which objects do you want to import? Just let's bring, you know, show me everything in the save file, bring them all in. And the, the one option here that um, affects the import and what you see is, uh, 
replace, add, or select here for this replace or add records. It's really just an option to say bring everything in, 